please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, it's clearly becoming a big haul at uh, Asian Games. Uh, yes, we know we should do more. We are a 1.3 billion lot. But uh, nevertheless, for the moment, it fills you with pride. Especially Jensen Johnson, silver in 800 meters and gold in 1500. So, uh, <clears throat> makes a point, doesn't he? Well, uh, let's uh, get back to Terra Firma. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me Anuj and Sonia. Uh, the markets are definitely uh, giving us some clouds. There's no taking away from that. The Asian markets in Wall Street are telling us that uh, Trump's uh, trade tantrums are now kind of keeping the market under the weather. Normally, we would have been outperformers because anyway, we don't benefit from the global supply chains. But now we also have our own negatives and they're not going away. That's the higher crude price. Now closer to 78. Uh, that's not a number we like. And this is coupled at a time when the last time we had 78, that was in February. At that time, the rupee was at 68. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have a rupee that's closer to 71, 70, 74, I think, when we went to bed. So that combo makes it a little more difficult for the economy. Yeah. It means actually higher yields. Very clearly, you're multiplying a crude at uh, 78, uh, multiplied by a rupee at uh, 71. And the impact on uh, raw material for a, a whole host of industries can be bad. And the economy will uh, you know, ha have to come to terms with it. As of all, this is not enough. The cherry on the cake for the bear is what's come from Yes Bank. Mm -hmm. Neither here nor there. That's also going to sour the market's uh, mood. So at the moment, uh, I'm looking for silver linings from the both of you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll discuss Yes Bank in greater detail. I think uh, we'll get a couple of guests in as well. Uh, Lata morning, Anuj morning. It's also Janmashtami on Sunday. So uh, here's wishing all our viewers, all the Lord Krishna devotees, uh, happy Janmashtami. The festivities are going to continue through the course of the year. So we'll keep wishing everyone. But you know, August, this is the last day of August. So you also uh, look back at how the month shaped up. Uh, the one thing you can say is that uh, it's been about the return of the laggards, right? I mean, the three pockets that did the best, corporate lenders, uh, pharmaceutical stocks, and the underperforming power and coal stocks. All of the stocks, if you see, have rallied about anywhere between uh, 10 to 20 percent. Even the power and coal stocks, NTPC, Coal India, up 10 percent. So the question we're asking is, is this a tactical rally or is there any structural change where you see, uh, you know, a, a recovery in these pockets? Anuj, morning. Of course, I'll ask you about the Nifty as well in a bit. But before that, uh, do you get a sense that um, the, the moves that we're seeing in some of these laggards is just a tactical move at best? Uh, <coughs> morning, Sonia. I, you know, actually, I'll answer that uh, with, with my view on the market itself because it will tie in uh, with that. So perhaps you don't need to ask me separately <laughs> on the market. Uh, Look, uh, first let's uh, you know uh, let's look at what happened uh, yesterday. I was telling Surbi that you know 3 p.m. move is a big possibility. The intraday chart of the Nifty should come up first, uh, just for yesterday, because uh, you know you're looking at a level of 11,676. That's meaningless. At 3 p.m. there was that big move. The equilibrium for the Nifty is at 11,650. So you're straight away down about 25, 26 points. When you start mm. today, you equilibrium is 11,650. Uh, the, the point on laggards making a comeback and you know the front line is taking a back seat i think is best explained with the with the bank nifty that's making a bit of a near term double top at 28380 that's something i would want to see mm -hmm. if there's any kind of follow through here uh, uh, possible for bank nifty to correct because of uh, yes bank and couple of other issues uh, perhaps to its 20 day moving average of 28000 that would be healthy for the for the market as well. I think what would be healthier is if the Nifty, which is at 11,676, and the current 20-day moving average is 11,500, if it takes a step back to 11,500, because if you buy a step back, then the template of the market, one step back, two step forward, will take care of you. Now coming to the point on, uh, you know, uh, the underperformers doing well, that in fact is the start of this month. Mm. Uh, you know, you pointed out some stocks, uh, but I, I just look at that. The Nifty this month is up 2.8%. The Nifty Bank is up 1.2%, still up. But I mean, I don't recall when was the last time Indusind Bank, HDFC Bank, and Kotak were all among the biggest underperformers. Under so uh, a lot of money is moving from the likes of Indusind Bank and Kotak Bank, even HDFC Bank, to the likes of Axis, ICICI for sure, even RBL Bank. Uh, now, you know, is this just a tactical play, or is this? Uh, my sense is that you know, uh, especially with Indusind Bank, some of the even long on leap uh, funds have decided to m take some money off. Uh, you know, with this Bharat financial merger also playing out at some point, and Ramesh Sopti, of course, retiring. So that, of course, is playing out. 
on Kotak, there's a bit of an uncertainty on you know what's going to happen next. Uh, uh, that is the one reason. HDFC Bank, of course, uh, where Parish Tanker is going to go. Uh, that, of course, is a bit of an uncertainty. So, uh, all of a sudden, the the leaders have a bit of yeah. uh, issue here, uh, leadership issue, while, while the laggards, of course. Uh, so are I would assume that it is more because the uh, uh, corporate lenders have become attractive. Mm. Uh, I mean, you, we can pick issues, but if if this were four years back or three years back people would have still brought the retailers. Mm -hmm. Now the corporate banks have not only passed the hump, mm -hmm. uh, there is a chance that some capex is taking place. So, you know, they are back in the game, uh, is my sense. So it is more the attractiveness of the corporate yeah. lenders yeah. that perhaps is also adding to people taking away money mm -hmm. from the... Uh, retail guys, I would assume. You know, Anuj mentioned leadership issues. Uh, so, you know, let's just uh, discuss Yes Bank, right? Yeah. I mean, is it, um, should a Yes Bank shareholder say, okay, Rana Kapoor is in it, at least for the time being, so that's good, or until further notice gives the lack of clarity, so that's bad? How do you really look at it? No, I think there will be initially a dip because yeah. the uncertainty continues. And uh, uh, you thought it'll be this way or that. And see, the best option for those who were betting on Rana Kapoor's uh, uh, candidacy, for them, this is definitely a negative. So they, there will be an initial sell-off because of that. But thereafter, you will start looking at the inherent value of the bank at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So how much can you go on selling? Even all the Jefferies and the CLSAs are all telling you 400 is a buy or you know 420 is a buy. They're not putting out a sell. They've retained. All of them say that you know yeah. it, uh, uncertainty has increased, volatility has increased. But their targets still remain high. So my sense is at lows, people will buy. Mm. And uh, really, you know, wait for the outcome. This is uh, the Reserve Bank has really left you <laughs> high and dry. Hanging. I, I yeah. mean, what do they mean by further notice? Further notice. Another week, exactly. <laughs> another month, another fortnight. One year. Uh, you uh, know, I, and uh, what? Are, what at the end of the fortnight? Yeah. I give you one more year, and you put in a succession plan. Yeah. I, you they know, they I haven't can done this before, right? They, I don't think they've done this. I don't yeah. think they've no, done this but before. But I, I, really I, I tell you one thing, uh, Sonia. Uh, you know, I give a lot of importance to what the market has done. Yeah. And if you look at Yes Bank, there are a lot of people people say a lot of things about yes bank but the fact is that it's you know it came out with uh, issue price of course after that it's split also uh, uh, you know it's given back all that money as dividend and after that it's been a 10 bagger anecdotally if you buy this stock on this kind of weakness closer to its 200 day moving average 200 day moving average is 335 there about uh, if you get a dip to 335 because of this reason uh, and you know, no inherent uh, you know issues. Uh, yeah. Then perhaps uh, that's a uh, you know the best buying opportunity. But then you know, let's see the market's verdict. Of course, we'll find out. Yeah, you know that is the difference between market regulator and banking regulator, isn't yeah. it? Uh, banking reg regulator is not looking at the share price. For them, another divergence was treated with a different kind of punishment. Yeah. Uh, so for similar crimes, can you give? similar, uh, 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 can you give dissimilar treatments? Mm -hmm. That would definitely weigh on the uh, the Reserve Bank. This is a promoter bank. Mm -hmm. No, Axis is completely a professional exactly. bank. Yeah. And RBI will not want to promote instability. Yeah. And the other un very unfortunate part, extremely unfortunate part, is Chairman Ashok Chawla has a very unnecessary charge sheet on him for all of 26 lakh rupees. But nevertheless, there is an uncertainty there. Yeah. So do you want to add to the uncertainty? So. I mean, I can see where the Reserve Bank is coming from, but I think ultimately this reply is because of lack of time. Mm -hmm. You sent the revalidation notice request, please go ahead and revalidate your decision, uh, rethink about it about three days back. The board sends it back to you in 24 hours they're not able to, or 48 hours, they're not able to make up their mind. So clearly they've asked for more time and uh, we are back to square one. Uh, so today I would really expect volatility, Mark, uh, shares to fall and then I guess some buying at that uh, lower level. Okay, well, Yes Bank has created a lot of wealth for shareholders in the past. Let's see whether the future is the same. But let's kickstart the show on that note. We have a lot of wise experts joining us to tell us how to trade this morning. Uh, Chris Wood of CLSE, we have his opinion. He's betting on India. He says the Indian equity market's resilience may be a signal that a new investment cycle is nearer at hand than the consensus thinks. He says this would mean that the stock market will be much more resilient to monetary tightening and a higher oil price than currently assumed. He he adds it would also mean that any correction will be a buying opportunity for investors. Okay, we have more opinion. Sanjay Mukim of Bank of America Merrill Lynch says their cautious view on Indian equities worked initially in 2018 and then it didn't. He says given the momentum since, 
the question of whether it is physically possible to go back to 32,000 is now increasingly being put to them. However, Sanjay says there are many reasons to be skeptical of this rally. Valuations of very high macro variables have worsened and political uncertainties in the country will increase almost predictably leading up to the 2019 general elections. Sir Sanjay says in inequities should have downside, but the key problem though is timing. Okay, I guess that's what makes the market, right? Two views at the opposite ends of the spectrum. But this view Chris has Wood got it seriously and, wrong. Yeah, Chris Wood and uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And of course, many of them have got it wrong, not just Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. But uh, let's get you some money market views because the rupee has been tanking day after day. Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says a renewed threat of the US-China trade spat. Argentina woes will be responsible for today's market action across Asia. He says this background is not a good omen for the dollar INR today. He expects the pair to trade uh, to break above the 71 oh. mark today. And the day's range could be a little wider between 70.85 to 71.20. On bonds, Bhaskar Panda says the Indian benchmark yields have been steadily moving up. And the 10-year uh, bond yield traded at 7.93 yesterday. He says the trend will continue as the US uh, as the INR remains under pressure as well as global oil prices remain elevated. He expects the 10-year benchmark body to trade in a range of 7.91 to 7.95 for the team. Hmm. Okay, over to Mangalam then for the world view. Well, this Friday's release is trade war returns because Trump, now we understand, will move forward with $200 billion worth tariffs on Chinese goods. And as a result of that, we saw the Wall Street taking a bit of a knock, the Dow Jones, S&P 500, as well as Nasdaq after a huge rally in the previous four days. Uh, just the way we had GST as well as logistics sensitives, there we have the trade sensitive. So Caterpillar and Boeing, both of them lower in trade after the trade war fears return. The trillion dollar baby, Apple, was in focus uh, during the interview with CNBC, Warren Buffett said he just bought a little more of Apple. More importantly, Apple has announced a September 12th date for, uh, uh, for, uh, for their event. And new iPhones are expected, so that's more iPhones that we cannot afford. Across the Atlantic, we saw the European markets also lower in trade. NAFTA negotiations weighing in on sentiment. We talk about the rupee depreciation. Well, the Argentine and peso, that one's depreciated 45% this year. And their central bank has actually hiked their rates to 60%. Across the Asian markets, there is a lot of red. And as we speak, the SGX Nifty, if you compare it to the September futures, also indicates a negative start. All this with the crude near $78 per barrel and rupee weakness expected will be very interesting to see how our markets pan out. I'm sure you can afford the new iPhone, Mangalam, <laughs> although we may not but be But we have to, to multiply it with 72. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's going to the US, by the way. He can bring it back for us if he's in time. All right, lots of requests coming in, right? So your bags are going to be full. Mangalam, just spoke about uh, Warren Buffett nibbling a little more into the Apple stock. So he's making money on the stock rather than buying the phone. Let's hear out the man himself. On his 88th birthday, the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett sat down with CNBC's Becky Quick. Very interesting conversation. Here's his rationale on why he bit into the Apple. You own 5% of the shares outstanding of Apple. It's the biggest holding for Berkshire Hathaway at $56 billion. Have you continued to buy even since that filing? We bought just a little. Uh, about six million of the shares are attributable to another fellow in the office that's owned it for a considerable period of time. The rest are my portfolio. But I bought just a little bit. Uh, I like I like to buy them cheaper. I mean, it's very different. I, we started buying, or I started buying, when the stock was maybe 100. I was buying it kind of as fast as I could. And then I ended up buying some as high. You know, a whole lot higher. I don't want to name the exact price, but a whole lot higher. That's. The, I'd rather have it go down. For one thing, if it goes down, Apple's going to buy a lot of stock back. They're already buying stock back. And if it goes down 10%, it means they get to buy 10% more shares, and my interest will go up 10% more for spending that money and buying shares. So I am benefited by going down. If I were to talk my book, I would talk it down. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I spoke with an analyst today, Gene Munster, and he pointed out that the interesting thing about Apple is that for a long time it was a very volatile stock. It kind of traded in this boom and bust cycle. Every time they had a yeah. new phone that came out, it would push the stock higher. If they didn't have a new release, it would drop. He, he said that it's still 65% of the business, but a lot of people are, are, are maybe looking at it a little differently. And he wonders how you look at it. Is this a boom and bust cycle, or is there something Not different? Not the least. Uh, I don't. 
you know, I'd like to see the new release do well or, you know, that. But I, I do not focus on the sales in the next quarter or the next year. I, I focus on the, they won't tell you exactly how many, but <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of people who practically live their lives by it. And if you look at that little uh, piece of whatever it is, <laughs> you, that is some of the most valuable real estate in the world. I mean, that is, Fifth, Fifth Avenue will never come close to that. I mean, it, it is, you've, got, you've got hundreds and hundreds of millions of people with loads of buying power and able to do business uh, or learn information or whatever it may be, and, they've, and it's part of their habit of living. I mean, they spend hours a day and it does all kinds of things for them. So that, that, that real estate is, is worth a fortune. And it's nice to have it added to as they sell it new phones, and of course a lot of them are replacement phones, but net, they're adding to hundreds and hundreds of millions of consumers that are never going to get to Fifth Avenue, or, or they're never, uh, it, and, and you are an indispensable part of their lives. If you can't put it more emotionally and more rationally as to how important uh, the cell phone itself and maybe the Apple phone is uh, for so many people, so many of us who use it. Uh, uh, so th that's a great. Uh, that was a great conversation, and you're going to get loads and loads of that conversation over and over again all through the day. Warren Buffett's uh, conversation with Becky. You know, I don't know if you heard the part uh, in the conversation where she asked him about the fake Twitter account. He's not on Twitter, and there's a Warren Buffett fake Twitter account w where, uh, they, uh, of course, uh, somebody gives out a lot of advice, and he said, no, I'm not on Twitter, but I do know that if he has so many followers, he's giving some right advice, and I'll go and follow him as oh, well. Oh, that's, that's humility. That is humility. And that's humor as well. Okay, no humor about Yes Bank, uh, with the Reserve Bank uh, informing Yes Bank that uh, uh, Mr. Kapoor can continue as MD and CEO of the bank till further notice. Uh, the tenure, tenure, of course, was due for renewal from the 1st of September. Note that the board of Yes Bank had applied to the RBI for Kapoor's extension in June after the AGM uh, had approved, uh, after the shareholders had approved his appointment at the AGM. Sandeep Parikh, the founder of uh, Fincic Law Advisors, joins us. Uh, to help us understand how he interprets this uh, this sentence, uh, Sandeep, exactly that. Uh, uh, I think we uh, uploaded that statement to, on your WhatsApp. Uh, what did you make of that uh, uh, appointment approved until further notice? So, uh, so obviously, as you as you notice, it's pretty cryptic and short. Uh, does not give any rationale. Yes, um, but it's seems to get into the issue of uh, promoters being CEOs of banks. Mm. Uh, so I'm assuming that's where it's coming from. Uh, uh, beyond that, it's kind of hard to kind of gauge what they're trying to achieve. So if, Sandeep, if this is an issue of promoters being permitted to be CEOs of bank, uh, should it be a read-through for some other banks as well, like uh, Kotak, for example? I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Kotak's reappointment is not due for a few years, but do you think we should, you know, investors should read this as, uh, you know, issues with other banks as well? It should, but it's kind of wrong policy, you know. Mm. I mean, you have people in, uh, who have skin in the game and you ask him to remove the skin in the game, I think. No, uh, Sandeep, I, 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 I don't know whether you should uh, only look at it because he's a promoter. I do think uh, the Reserve Bank has raised that objection at all. Uh, there were divergences in Yes Bank's results. Uh, mm. uh, he, they had reported for FI17 uh, an NPA of about 1.5%, and, and after the Reserve Bank's inspection, it shot up to 6%. Uh, in uh, Axis Bank's case, I think they reported 4%, and after RBI's inspection, it went to 5.5%. Now, many of us assumed that the, uh, the uh, lack of uh, extension for uh, Axis Bank CEO was because of this divergence. So we all are reading, or uh, at least, I mean, Jeffries, there are other reports that are reading. Uh, the general perception is that there were divergences. He broke RBI rules. And that's why RBI is uh, asking the board to validate, asking the board whether, do you want the same guy who broke RBI rules? That's, that is the perception. You don't buy that? Yes, again, I don't know. I have to gauge from this... Uh communication. As I said, you know, this should not be kind of shadow regulation. If he's not fit and proper, he's uh, uh, kind of misreported and certainly he should go. 
But then we should take it and give them a chance to defend itself. I mean, the way that he functions is sometimes somebody has done wrong, uh, you kind of confront that person, go through a quasi-judicial process within the regulator itself, and say, yes, you know, we, we think you're not fit and proper, please get out. Hmm. But this shadow shadow regulation is very dubious because you, there's no way a person can defend himself or herself from such an allegation. And, you know, uh, this, this we're debating on a news channel instead of uh, within a kind of an open uh, system within the regulator. Uh, I, I find this very discomforting. Okay. okay. Uh, well, how does an investor approach? Uh, I know you're not a, a stock market guy, but for an investor, uh, this is the reason to sell off the stock? I, I would guess so. I mean, if it's, again, as I said, uh, the market seems to know a lot more than what the regulator is willing to kind of let out. Uh, if, if it's actually kind of removal of a CEO because of posting wrong numbers, or say it's like an adverse impact on the market. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Sandeep, we leave it at that. Thanks uh, for joining us and giving us your view. All right, so perhaps the market knows a lot more than what the regulator seems to let out. At least that's what Sandeep Parikh is suggesting for now. Let's see which way it heads, I mean, which way the stock heads today. Uh, for now, it's, of course, hanging in thin air. We don't know which way Rana Kapoor's appointment is going to head until further notice. Those are the words that came in. We'll take a short break. Uh, we'll come back with the list of top 10 stocks. Of course, Yes Bank will be on our radar, but a whole host of other stocks to talk about as well. Hi, welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Well, this morning, most Asian markets are under pressure. The Hong Kong market is actually sitting on almost a 400-point loss. Uh, that's because of news that uh, Donald Trump has supported the trade war with China. There's so many comments coming in there. Look at that. All three indices now in the red. Uh, the uh, SGX Nifty is also a tad bit in the red right now. Uh, uncertainty with respect to the trade war coming in. But our research team is here to give you the list of top 10 stocks for the trading day. Anuj, first to you on your stocks. Also, given that it's a Friday, you don't know which way the US markets may head. You think the general mood of the market may be a bit downbeat? Yeah, it, it, it could be. You know, I thought you said it, since it's Friday, backing any liquor stocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have done well. But, uh, you, you know, I, 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 I take your point. This perhaps could be a bit of an excuse for the The market's been overbought, the put call ratio. We've been talking about this. This perhaps could be that excuse that the market perhaps takes a step back. Uh, though the two stocks that I'm uh, putting out today are on the green side, and that's because uh, at least on strong stocks, there's been some buying. Uh, Sonia, you discussed TVS Motor about 10 days back when that block deal had happened, and that, you know, that selling is over from institutional investors. Uh, it's gained 7% in last eight days and consistent delivery buying since that block deal. Still 29% 20, from its highs. So, of course, again, today the market mode will be uh, the key, but I would want to see the reaction on this one. And Gale is interesting. Uh, you know, normally a boring stock, but for the last two or three days, uh, it's showing signs of, uh, you know, breaking out. Uh, its high has been 400. That's where it's seen a lot of congestion. So, let's see if it can take that out. Okay. Fair point. Uh, uh uh, Gale and TVS uh, we'll watch, but uh, auto stocks, uh, Sonia, uh, you know, the new insurance norms come kick in mm. uh, on September 1st. What's uh, what's your sense of how investors will approach auto stocks? Well, uh, you also have the auto sales numbers coming out tomorrow uh, from the first, and this time the expectation is that things will be on the weaker side because of a couple of reasons. One, the Kerala floods impact. There was an impact, especially on sales from Maruti, from Aisha Motors that have a large exposure there. Two, the West Bengal market has been disrupted because now licenses are made compulsory before you buy a two wheeler, uh, two wheeler, which is of course great for safety, but not as much for sales. And uh, also, regional RTOs have now giving, started giving permits for higher load capacities for older trucks. So that's oh. why the truck sales could also get impacted. Now, that's on the auto sales bit, could be under pressure because of that. Also, as you mentioned, from September 1st, buyers of new cars must purchase upfront insurance for uh, three years on new cars and for five years on new two-wheelers, which means that the initial insurance cover for you for a car will go up to at least uh, 24,000 rupees from a base price of 8,000. So suddenly your you know outgo goes up because of which maybe it could be purchases could be deferred for bikes uh, the initial outgo will now be thirteen thousand rupees versus a base of about two thousand three hundred earlier. So I expect in general the uh, trend to be a bit downbeat. I'm looking at stocks like Maruti, Bajaj Auto, Leyland, etc. Okay. No, I, I I stand by the government's rules, the administration's rules on these. Uh, uh, I think uh, people should pay for the safety if they buy the vehicle. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I, is it finally the last time we are hearing about the Idea Vodafone deal? Nisha filed the story yesterday. 
Idea Cellular will be the stock to watch out for the final approval for the mega merger of Vodafone's India Operations and Idea Cellular to create the largest telecom company in the country. Vodafone Idea is already in place. Sources with direct knowledge share that NCLT has given the approval and it's set to be a merged entity and should be soon trading as the merged entity as well. Key challenges would be the price war as well as the competition coming in in the sector, their EBITDA revenue as well as market share, share has dwindled and also over 1 lakh crore rupees of debt. So how they are going to do uh, future fund infusions will be critical. Okay, yep. Uh, we'll have Reema join us to tell us what the stock implications can be. But uh, I, I would think that power stocks and bank stocks should be on your radar today. Today is the day when that high-level uh, uh, meeting, a high-level committee headed by the cabinet secretary is going to meet on uh, the power sector, uh, power companies that could go to the NCLT because of the Reserve Bank's uh, uh, rule. Now, in an interesting turn of events, one of the projects that was supposedly bought, Prayagraj, uh, has got into a bit of a race. JSW Energy has submitted a revised offer to acquire that same uh, power company, Prayagraj, after this, uh, it came a day after Prayagraj lenders had issued a letter of intent to the Tata's backed resurgent power. Ritu filed the story yesterday. Let's hear it. That's right. We understand from sources that a day after lenders issued a letter of intent to resurgent power promoted by Tata Power to acquire Prayagraj Power, we understand from sources that the other bidder in the fray, that is JSW, has now revised its offer to over 6,000 crore rupees, which was initially offered by the Tatas to acquire this company. We also understand that as part of the deal, JSW has now also offered equity stake to lenders as well as, uh, you know, uh, absorbing tax liability that emerges out of this acquisition, something that they had not offered before, which is why, uh, you know, lenders chose to go with Tata Power. Now, it remains to be seen whether or not the lenders will accept this revised offer from JSW, which we understand is a tad higher than what the Tatas have offered uh, to acquire controlling stake of Prayagraj Power. Do remember, the SBI-led consortium uh, that has an exposure to Prayagraj Power, uh, that company has a debt of about 11,000 crore rupees, and it is one of the cases that falls under the purview of the Feb 12 circular and therefore if no resolution is found outside uh, you know this company will have to be sent to the NCLT. Okay, Ritu, thanks for that. A permanent pain point for our markets these days has been the escalating crude prices. Brent crude this morning is 77.7, uh, so almost at 78. The rupee also getting worse. Yeah, I mean, we went through all this, so uh, let's just uh, count the guys who could be impacted. Obviously, airlines and oil refinery stocks, but I would think banks, because uh, you're going to have uh, bond yields perhaps climb even higher than 7.93. I'm assuming the trend will continue. I mean, if the rupee gets worse and if the uh, crude prices continue to rise through the day, at the moment, that's how it looks because the Asian markets have opened in a bad mood. So, uh, and then you have this Argentinian peso story behind you. So, initial uh, reaction would be negative on rupee and already on uh, uh, crude. So I, I think yields will also go up. So banks, Bank Nifty will continue to struggle okay. is my feeling. Okay, Bank Nifty will continue to struggle. But uh, uh, yes, Bank, the initial reaction should be should be red. After yes. that, we'll take it from there. Yeah, I mean, I think we went through it uh, in detail. Yeah. For an uh, investor, it would be that uh, it... See, the best response for the investor would have been a yes mm. for the appointment. Since that is not there, they will have to express uh, their disappointment. Uh, and. Uh, but then thereafter, you know, dips could be bought. Okay, so here's a quick recap then for our of our top stocks today. Uh, stocks with uh, positive news flow today, TVS Motor, Gale, Idea Cellular and JSW Energy. While stocks with negative news flow this morning, uh, not necessarily negative. I mean, Yes Bank was just see some lack of clarity. So in the red, Tata Power, Maruti, Bajaj Auto, Ashok Leyland, Jet Airways, SpiceJet, Interglobe, Nifty Bank, Berger Paints and NBFCs like Shiram Transport and m, &M Finance. We'll take a break on that note, but how do you trade the last Last day of the week, Ashwini Gujral, Sudarshan Sukhani and Prakash Gaba will join in next. Welcome back. Uh, well, we had a rough day yesterday. Of course, the last half an hour expiry move uh, sort of uh, negated most of that. Uh, but the, the bank nifty was a bit soft and this morning the SGX nifty is indicating that we'll start perhaps closer to the low point of trade yesterday. Ashwini Gujral, Sudarshan Sukhani and Prakash Gaba now join us. Uh, good morning, uh, Ashwini. 
uh, thoughts on Nifty, which uh, of course uh, has been more resilient, and also on the Bank Nifty, where we saw a bit of a cooler. Well, good morning, and you know I am more interested in how the market is acting than you know what level and this and that. I would have thought that yesterday you should have gotten follow through on Bank Nifty, and basically that is a problem spot. And the way it's reacting, and I think I read this quote by Chris Wood also, that it's not reacting terribly. So often it can happen that while the bad news is on, you may have a sideways type of a move, and the moment that bad news starts to turn, and one day, you know, all bad news starts to turn, you will have a fairly ferocious move on Bank Nifty because Yesterday, corporate banks, PSU banks came back very strongly. Now, possibly uh, the thesis here could be that uh, you know investors are trying to buy uh, these temporary dips, which they figure out that they'll probably get absorbed, and they are buying into this corporate lending story on this decline. So, I'm interested in buying you know yesterday's lows if we get there, particularly on Bank Nifty, and even on the Nifty it does not look like. We're going to uh, crash and burn. So, uh, uh, you know, chances are the moment uh, things start to turn a bit, you'll have fairly uh, strong upside. So, you buy at what, 27,900 or something? 27,950, 28,000. Okay. And on the Nifty, somewhere, you know, 11, uh, between 11,600, 650. So, that way, uh, you know, all these declines because of temporary events, you know, Yes Bank, etc should be bought into because that is the view market is taking. It's trying to buy bad news. All right. Uh, 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 Sudarshan, good morning to you. What would your uh, call be, uh, if not for the day positionally? Yeah, good morning. Well, it's not for the day because the day could be choppy like yesterday. But positionally, we want to buy this dip in the nifty. The chances are that the market is entering into a trading range with support at 11,600 approximately. That support will, be, will determine today perhaps. And uh, in resistance around uh, 11,750. A 150 point range could develop. Now at the lower end of this range, we want to be buyers. So any dip in the nifty below 11,650 is an opportunity to add positions to what we built yesterday. Uh, the chances are that after this uh, trading range completes itself whenever, the breakouts should again come. There is nothing to suggest that the U.S. markets have fallen or the U.S. markets have turned around or the Indian markets will turn around. It's a correction. Uh, it's a sideways move, consolidation. We'll wait it out patiently by being buyers on dips towards 11,600. Okay. Prakash Gaba is also here with us. Prakash, you concur with that view that all this is is just a pause, just catching your breath and then the market is going to move higher at some point? Good morning, Sonia. So far, the trend is still intact up technically and it has not been compromised. What we saw yesterday and day for yesterday was some kind of a pause, like you said, absolutely correct, ran up too fast, a breather was taking place and yesterday was FNO expiry. Some more breather on the downside, I think, are buying opportunities. Nifty has a very strong support in the vicinity of 11,625. As long as it holds, I'm not worried about it. I think we could be uh, buying dips out here. As far as Bank Nifty is concerned, I think 28,000, very, very, very strong support. So I think the, as long as they hold, upside is on. We may play range, be stock specific, that's better. Okay, okay. trade tra stock specific. Ashwini, before we go through your list, uh, I wanted your thoughts on Yes Bank. Uh, uh, how to trade that and, of course, your list. You know, this is a season of changing CEOs. So I don't think, you know, any individual makes the cut. If you gap down for some reason, I want to see what kind of buying comes back. I mean, look at Axis Bank. So once the CEO, uh, either uh, the current one or uh, the next one is announced, etc., I think Yes Bank will cross 400. So uh, you're looking to just not be the first one to buy, but anytime you know at the lows you find enough buying, uh, I think this is a good investment time in Yes Bank. Okay, uh, that was going to be my first question as well. Okay, with uh, Yes Bank uh, done, uh, what are your other uh, picks, Ashwini? See, other picks, uh, Pharma did well yesterday. Glenmark is a buy with a stop of 654, target of 680. ICICI Bank, 
did not decline. In fact, went up yesterday. So that's a buy with a stop of 340, target of 354. Sun Pharma is a buy with a stop of uh, uh, 634, target of 660. NIT Tech started a move. That's a buy with a stop of 1340, target of 1380. And Tata Steel is a buy with a stop of 600, a target of 625. Okay, uh, Sudarshan, what about you? What What is your stock list and also your view on Yes Bank? I mean, as they say, no individual is greater than the organization. Do you believe that this could be the same for Yes Bank as well? It'll move on irrespective of who's at the helm? Yes, I think so. Sonia, the market also believes this. Otherwise, the markets would have reacted very differently and violently. So the chances are that Yes Bank has strong support at 350. It's almost close to that level. And this is, I, I think, uh, smart money is going to step in and take this as a buying opportunity. So investors should also consider. Don't think it's a trade. It's a short-term a positional trade for some days and weeks. But it's there on the long side. You want to buy Yes Bank uh, on the slightest dip we see today. Uh, for the stocks, uh, it's a mixed bag. I have ACC, cement has been doing well. It's a small subsector, but that is bottoming out. It's coming in my list and I've talked about it earlier. ACC is a buy. Pharma remains my favorite. We, we identified the sector when it was bottoming out. Uh, today, I have Ajanta Pharma in this list. Ajanta Pharma is now on the verge of breaking out on, on the upside from a small consolidation. And again, FMCG, Godrej Consumer Products is the third buy idea. So the uh, theme continues to be you look at good quality stocks which are consolidating, having minor dips and go long. There are two short selling stocks uh, intraday, ICICI Prudential, surprisingly it had a big massive rally and then the entire rally has been lost. I mean every day it has been falling, something is going on there but it's a short sell for the day and so is IRB, IRB Infra. Okay. I'm just wondering, maybe somebody can take do a PIL against RBI for gender bias? <laughs> anyway, just a thought. <laughs> okay. Prakash, uh, good morning. Uh, your thoughts uh, or, or your stocks and of course your call also on Yes Bank? Yeah, uh, good morning, Anoj. Well, uh, I'll start with Yes Bank. Yes Bank looks to me some kind of a dip is possible. If a dip comes in, maybe to around 340, 342 zone, there could be a buying opportunity. So far, yes, there is a dip. We must see a dip as well. Uh, like India Cement, that looks good. Looks like a good base formation. Looks like it's bottoming out processes on. We could see an upside to around 133 zones, stop below 124. ITC is a stock that looks to be needs to be looked at from a slightly longer term perspective. But in the short term, yes, the target is 325. I would have a stop below 315 on ITC and trade long. I like Sun Pharma Advance. Spark is certainly looking good. What a move that we have seen yesterday. I think it should continue up. Possible target on the upside, 425, and stop below 390 should be fine. And finally, Tata Steel is there. Looks like a good base formation, and for a, I think it's trying to make a big move out here. For the, in the short term, the technical targets are 620, stop below 602. All right, uh, we have to take a break, uh, gentlemen. We are coming back with lots more questions for you, but we will also be joined by Sanjeev Basin of IIFL for some fundamental analysis. If you had your choice between buying and holding a 30-year bond for 30 years or holding a basket of American stocks, there's just no question you're going to be, do better holding stocks. So it, it, it's, it's more attractive than, considerably more attractive than fixed income securities. That doesn't mean they're going to go up or down tomorrow or next week or next year. But over time, a bunch of businesses that are earning high returns on capital are going to beat a bond that's fixed at 